Hello, I'm Mark Baer. You're watching Your Town Television. I'm with Andrew Jackson, artist. Welcome. How you doing? So, we just had the big um, arts gala yes. uh, from the Arts Council, and you were an honoree this year, and I was in the audience watching you, was very moved, and now here you are. Uh, <laughs> and your paintings look beautiful, and uh, your speech was inspiring, and uh, I wanted to uh, continue that celebration. Great, thank you very much. Uh, that was quite an honor. Yeah, it, and uh, well deserved. And uh, just let's um, let's just start where you came. Nineteen eighty nine. At the age of nineteen, you came here. Yep. Let's. How did it all begin here? Um, I ran out of options where I grew up in Anaheim. I was I was pretty rough, and um, I was on a vacation, and I walked into a gallery and. Um, I saw a man painting, and I just uh, I just threw everything over, and so this is it. And I I, I became a, an apprentice of this artist, uh, John Mason, and um, he would allow me to watch him paint, and um, I started to learn how to learn, and I started to experiment. But um, it was just this incredible fit that it was it was my line. I was I was going to be doing this. Um, forever because you can never master it. Now, just, now you did, um, you had uh, been steeped in art a bit from your parents before this, so. Right. Uh, uh, my mother was a, a president of an Anaheim Art Association, so I was around uh, kooky artists my whole life, and then um, my both grandmothers had, had painted for, for pleasure, and then um, my grandfather and my grandparents retired in 68 to Carmel, so every summer in my life I came up and didn't get a tan in, in the fog, but he would introduce me to all these amazing artists in their studios, and it was just this, uh, another world, this, this uh, acceptance that people painted these amazing things, and, and they had shops. And then Carmel was like a village, you know, like people really, you know, all these amazing artists like uh, Malcolm Moran and Gacha Rota and um, you know, Roberto Lepetti, Lynn Lepetti, you know, they had their own studios and it was just a part of what this square mile town was and I always wanted to be that. And so y y you uh, found your calling. Yeah, and, and uh, a, a destiny, like, uh, like I, I wanted to be, have my own gallery shingle on a door and um, be this uh, person other other young people would meet and be inspired by as profoundly as I was. So uh, we, we were talking before the the show about uh, early success and the fact that um, w what happens if you paint something that somebody likes it and that's all they want you to paint. And, 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 you, and, and, you, and this was very, um, this almost happened to you. Yeah. And, and so I, my, my basic question, I want to get back to having integrity. Because this is what, this is at the end of the day what it is to be an artist, is the integrity. Without yeah. that, you're, you're not that. So let, let, let's talk about that experience a bit. Um, it's, it's a, that's that's a, a, big, a big one because um, you got to learn it. You got to learn it from uh, all angles. So, yeah. So the the experience I had with the crossroads of what I would like to do. I had been painting seascapes. I got into Wyland Galleries. I was in six of them: Maui and Kauai. I was uh, 24 years old, and um, they found me for my creativity. I would have my my dream, paint my dreams, and I would hide the images in the rocks, like people um, in their relationships, and they'd be barely noticeable. And then. So that after a few months, they had me in Hawaii, and they put this one painting of mine in front of me, and it was a glowing wave with the sun in the sky and a stick on the beach or some sand or some shells. And they said, Andy, we want this, but we want 50 of these, but, you know, play ball. Just move the stick around on the beach. And I was like, what? You know, like, I thought you liked me because I was so creative. And um, I was just like, nope. And I... Uh, I was out, and uh, they they said, you know, well that's fine. And but my agent, you know, had something more to say, and she said she was gonna put me back in the gutter where she found me. And I was like, well, if the gutter's Carmel, <laughs> bye. 
<laughs> and I was like, so I went back and, um, you know, my experience with uh, wanting to be an artist is uh, it doesn't come easy. You know, your, your, your paintings don't fly off the wall and when you're beginning and uh, sometimes when you're, when you think you, you got it down. But um, I had, you know, been, I started in a teepee in Big Sur on a boat in Moss Landing, uh, Friendly Plaza. Lots of different places. The elevator at the Pine Inn when it rained, and um, I made it because but without the it's worth it. Without without the dream, you couldn't have survived that life. Nah, and um, you know, finding uh, reading uh, Jack London in a teepee in Big Sur during the heavy downpour, and um, you know, you just you just latch on to this big dream that's bigger than myself. And um, it's important. It's the it's the one thing that comes natural to me. Everything else is just hard. People think I, I can do a lot of things, but I'm a really good janitor. And um, I worked in a factory. You know, I, I love that work. I, I like to see the machine, the um, viscosity of the ink, the suction. You know, like the the crush. And um, those all things came really quickly to me. But I didn't want to work in a factory. I just Fourteen-hour days is hard. <laughs> yeah, you, you basically wanted to paint the factory. I was painting in my mind while yeah. I was feeding machine yeah. cardboard, and yeah. um, I, the the dream was like, okay, this or that. And um, so, when you have nothing else to um, fall back on, so to speak, what my parents always would like me to fall back on something. Well, I got one thing, so there is no falling back, falling forward. Yeah. Well, just because time goes quickly, I want to talk. First of all, about these beautiful nocturne paintings you're painting, uh, and kind of urban nightscapes, and they're very um, poetic, uh, romantic but unsentimental, uh, and these surfaces are um, very worked. These 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 kind of rough surfaces. It's like you're just kind of attacking this thing. Yeah, let, that's let, fun. Let, let, let's talk, let's talk about that work. Um, I, I just, uh, it, uh, it mostly was a nag, nagging feeling from when uh, the Dream Theater was gone, and uh, below it, Bassos, you know, like uh, I had painted Bassos many times, I painted most of the bars in the area, and um, it was just romantic, kind of my world, um, actually, as a part-time job, sold ads for Modern Drunkard Magazine, so, and it was Access, I, I ran an ad for my bar scenes in there, and I was able to, I was the West Coast my phone number was in their magazine as ads for West Coast. So I've been in every bar in San Francisco. I've been in every bar in L.A. And so um, that's also the reason why I quit drinking. But um, I love, I just love this feeling of this other world. And now I, it, it transferred to outside. But missing the Dream Theater, missing Basso's. And um, there's so many things in Monterey that we'll be missing. We're going to miss them tomorrow. So um, I, I'm just kind of documenting what feels good to me. It's 25 years in this, you know, the cannery. I used to walk on the, the tracks that are now a bike path. You know, there's these things, and um, uh, I, I want I want to keep them. So I'm, I'm painting them. So the other thing you've been not only a, you've been a gallery owner, you've been a, a champion of other artists, you've been a uh, collector of art. Yeah. And uh, you see art as the luxury that it is, and what, what it what it what it gives you, and what do other artists give you? And who? And let's let's talk about that part of your life. Um, like I, I had, uh, it was kind of a handshake lie, but um, Ivan Earl doesn't allow artists in the studio, so he was seventy nine, and um, so I, in a wink, you know, I told him I wasn't a I wasn't an artist, and. Um, so he wouldn't, he wouldn't kick me out. But we, we struck a, a good friendship, and I got to watch him paint while he walked on a treadmill painting his painting, singing a little song, I'm Gonna Live Forever. And um, I, I just cherish that. And um, you know, he's no longer with us, but earlier than that, before I met him, I was buying his prints. And there was a, a printer who got PPs, uh, printer's proofs. And I, I was able to buy them as I could afford them. And um, I, I just... I just love it. Malcolm Moran, you know, his, his uh, commercialized you know, boys and girls holding balloons and, and uh, brazing. Well, his fine art, you know, he would, he would let me see this, like, 
just elliptical surface. And it was like, no one would really know what it was, but in the very tip it would be these eyes and a beak, and it would be this owl stalking. You know, that was just fine art. And, um, you know, he shared that with me. So there's all these aspects to artists, you know, their secret lives. Uh, Wendell Brown, you know, he's known for these burning sunsets. But if you looked at his little book, it held two pictures high. It was a folder. These amazing wonderments, you know, like, and I go, why don't you paint these? And he goes, oh, there's no market for that. And they were the best. You know, those are the ones I want. Yeah. It's just like, he, I, they just really strongly pull me. Uh uh, I mean, we were talking, art is just such a, a, a many-faceted thing, and we were talking, would, 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 would you recognize a Jackson Pollock? Would you, re would you recognize a Rothko before it was iconic? Uh, wh what does it take to develop the eye? How is it that just seeing a piece of art hits you? Uh, I, could, I could call to one of my you know, for famous forever artists, uh, David Cho. I met him when he got off the plane from being in jail in Japan for shoplifting. And um, this guy, no matter what art material you put in front of him, he would pick it up like he'd mastered it decades ago. This guy, this natural ability, this careless attitude, but this brilliant, you know, amazing master. You know, that was like, I didn't have to think further than anything. I offered him a show, I offered to buy all of his, you know, originals that I had money for, and um, I offered to be his publisher. And I became his publisher for 12 editions. And um, then Banksy found him. And he now, and Facebook founders found him. And now he's worth $400 million because he, <laughs> he was selected to paint six floors of Facebook. And all they did was cover their computers with plastic. And he sprayed paint all over their offices. And they loved it. And they paid him. Yeah, well, they're Just amazing. <laughs> so, what a, what a crazy deal. Now, you, uh, so I, I, I Talk to you about um, uh, teaching, which you call mentoring, and, yeah. and, and you're at Yak, and you're you're working with kids. And mentoring is a different thing than teaching. And and I guess what we're talking about is is sharing your passion. And so yeah. let's talk about Yak a bit. Um, I, I was approached by Megan Marsha, the founders of the Youth Arts Collective, and um, they asked me to be their first paid mentor. And um, I wasn't ready. I was a mess. And um, so I took some time. And then after two years, um, I trusted myself at, to be trusted by these youth. And um, I said, I'm on. And they said, good, we've been waiting for you. And five and a half years later, it's, it's a joy in my life. I've cut my hours down. But um, I take it as uh, I get so, like, as, you, as you've seen me, I, I just geek out on um, this creativity that inspires me. But these kids, you know, they're just raw. They're putting stuff out there that, in a safe place, maybe their parents aren't looking over their shoulders, you know, and they're putting some <laughs> weird stuff out there. And I'm just like, yes, do it. And um, mentoring for me is uh, shining a light a little bit ahead of them and saying, look at that, look at this. And then uh, when the light goes on in their eyes and, and, and they, they just get excited, I get excited, and the room's just buzzing. It's just the best. Yeah, so this is really exciting. And then, so what's, um, and, and where can people see your work? These nocturnes are just beautiful. Thank you. Uh, um, I, most of my, I'll, sh I'll show a lot of my progress shots on Instagram, and uh -huh. that's Outer Edge Studio, uh -huh. uh, as if you look up on Instagram. And um, also my website, outeredgestudio.com, and uh, some of the published prints from the other artists I carry are on there sometimes too. But um, yeah, I'm really, really, Going forward, every, all all oars out. You know, I'm I'm like pushing for. Um, so, I've, yeah, I've quit this so many times, and um, I'm 47, and uh, not going to quit anymore. It's just uh, this is my passion, and I'm I'm going to give it my all. Yeah. So, so, and it's always there's always revelation. Yeah. And there's always something new, and it's uh, it's. Uh, you, you, you know, I've, I've seen the work change over the years, and it's 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 really exciting. But uh, you, the the, pr the problem with the the artist, almost every artist I know, is there's very un unless you're making somebody some money, there's nobody saying go do this. Wait, right. I need you. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's o only only you can say I I I, I need this. But as you said, uh, art saved your life. You can live. Any way, if you've got the, 
you know, uh, it, it will, it will, it will, it will protect you. Yeah. And if you abandon it, bad stuff happens. Or it just keeps nagging at you until you come yeah. back. Yeah. It just, uh, it's the only place where you can just completely leave the planet and uh, you're, you're just an hour's time, so it's worth it. Yeah. So what's your, your work habits? Are you, are you painting every day? Or are you uh, kind of? Um, I, I have an art studio now in the American Tin Cannery. Uh -huh. and, um, so I, I go there as often as possible. I post hours of uh, Fridays, Mondays, and Tuesdays, okay. 12, to, 12 to 5, but um, I'm there a lot more than that. It's just working. And um, I just get there as often as I can, and then I, I work at Yak two days a week, Wednesday, Thursday. So um, every moment I can, I'm there, unless I'm cutting my lawn. That's it. <laughs> Beautiful. And so uh, what, you know, we, I've seen what's changed uh, you know, over over the years, but what stayed the same in in the work? Uh, the, the the seeking out that light. Um, I'm just if I could. It's not the light that that you see. It's the light you feel or remember. It's just these uh, these bounce lights that you think are there. Those are the colors I'm interested in, and um, th that's just sharpened. Like when I when I mix color, it's um, I'm. I'm trusting my eyes and uh, my heart completely now. And it's just color. I mean, when I paint people in paintings, they're just in the way. It's just I'm painting the light around them. Okay. And, uh, you know, and your relationship with color, how has that changed over the years? Um, I, I created my own um, color mixing theory. It's an intensity wheel, and that's um, yeah. most. That, that was mentioned at the art thing. So yeah. So talk about that a bit. Well, uh, I've always found, I've always felt like I had to figure things out my own way and it's 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 a big burden you know like uh, it's exhausting but um, I did figure things out I was taught many different uh, color theories with different teachers and um, all of a sudden the ones that com I combined them all and I and I threw away a lot and it's just the, the intensity of color when you take an art color theory class it's a hue value and then intensity well they, they talk about a lot about hue and value, and then intensity just go mm, bright to dull, and um, that's it, the entire wheel for me. Is, is uh, bright to dull, but it's so much more, and well, that's you that's want eleven. You want intensity. I just want to the the full spectrum, yeah. and I don't use black anymore. That just kills color. I don't cross palette anymore. I don't put yellows in my violets to to bring them less intense. That just kills the the hue. So my my different way of doing things. I haven't done much with it, but I've, I've got a book ready for the instructions, but it's very simple, so it's not really a book. It's, um, I'm just trying to match it with a uh, paint brand, so it's like, here's my hues, and here's how to make them work the best. Wow. Okay, what a pleasure, man. <laughs> um, you're watching Your Town Television. I'm with Andrew Jackson. Go check him out at the Tin Cannery. Go check him out online. Go buy his paintings. Please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give him some love, baby. <laughs> okay, great, man. Thank Thanks. you.